watch it. And so that's a great thing because it would definitely appeal to users. Users would be excited to get the opportunity to watch an exciting movie for free, just watching ads. And the even better thing is that um, advertisers would be very excited about it. Now, um, in my conversation with Susan Schieffer, um, who is a managing director at uh, uh, Group M and a lead in digital investments, um, she talked about some things that digital can learn from broadcasting. One of the things was a guarantee of viewership. Now, people love movies, first off, that's just sort of understood. And we did a little one-question survey where we simply asked if people would watch ad sport movies on YouTube. The overwhelming response was positive. A lot of people in the yes and absolutely yes, almost about 50%. A lot of maybes, but that could be changed with a good movie. And the no's were probably people who wouldn't watch it if it was on TV anywhere. Um, the next thing is the premium brand safe content, which absolutely movies provide, as I said before. And the third thing is um, designated ad block format. So this would be like your TV ads that you have to watch, you don't have a choice. You're already, according to a movie, you're gonna keep watching. And the last thing would be standardized ratings, which not something this idea really addresses, but some of the industries are moving towards. Um, the other thing is leveraging YouTube movies. So, not sure if you guys know, but YouTube movies exist. I actually had no idea until yesterday, and I asked a bunch of people, not that many you know, that you can rent or buy quality movies on YouTube. And um, this could be a great thing for us to leverage with the ad support in movies. So by putting up a movie with ads and having seeing the option to buy it for three dollars and get to watch without ads, it really gives the opportunity to get more people over to YouTube movies and take a look at that selection. <clears throat> All right, so this leads us into our next idea of the progress bar. How this idea works is a goal would be placed on top of the bar. Say for example, if you watch five ads, then the user can enjoy an ad-free experience for the rest of the day and possibly maybe get a promotion code for one of the ads that they just watched. So, I don't know about you, but if there were a bar that were half full staring at me every time I went on, I would really want to fill that up, even regardless of the fact that that meant that I would get an ad-free experience or maybe a promotion code, I would really want to fill up that bar. So that, in addition to maybe you know getting a 10% off code for one of the hair products that I just watched, or knowing that if I stuck around for the rest of the day that I could watch more videos and not have to deal with ads, we believe that this would provide a positive reinforcement um, to watch more ads and to not skip the ads, as well as to stay for a longer period of, period of time. So yeah. All right, next thing. Blair identified uh, social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat as YouTube's main competitors. And you focused on scale as one of the distinguishing qualities of these. But I think the, the competition really comes down to this question of production and provision. So what social media sites do really well is they provide users with content really easily, really passively. Um, they just hand it to you on a feed, and the user doesn't have to go out and search for it at all. Now YouTube is excellent at production. They have a massive amount of content, but maybe too much. So when I was talking to Chet Fenster, he said the main issue in the future becomes this issue of navigation. Now, I think YouTube can leverage its strengths, which is a really amazing user base, to uh, address this issue and you know, really benefit from it, actually. It's not an really issue at all. They can crowdsource YouTube's engaged you know, users to organize content and provide some structure to it. Now, the way I was thinking about this is that currently YouTube is predominantly um, videos are received through vertical provision. They come from the creator to the viewer. Now, what feeds do is they introduce lateral provision which is from viewer to viewer. And that's something that YouTube can capitalize on much more, and it also provides this connection with other people on YouTube. So our solution to this is YouTube Curator. <laughs> so here we go. Go ahead, click on Curator up there. YouTube Curator is basically a feed. Um, it's really easy to add a video to your feed, or you can follow other people's feeds. Now this Really, there's a lot of ways that this could manifest. There's a lot of potential in this, but it's quite simple. You could follow your friend, Jolie Hahn, because you like her taste. Um, just connect with people that you know. Uh, you could follow Zoe Deschanel, you know, because I'm always going for beauty tips, trying to get my hair just the same way. I'm still struggling with that one. Uh, I could follow my favorite YouTuber. Or I think where the most potential is, is following specialized curators. Like Area 95 has great taste in comedy, you know? So it's this new. Currently the stars on YouTube are creators, but I think the stars could also be curators. Because creators aren't necessarily the best at like compiling content, but there's a lot of potential for people to be engaging in that role on YouTube. So TV has premium content and ad viewership, reliable ad viewership. 
and, and other social media platforms provide easily um, content to users. However, we believe that with those changes, if implemented, YouTube can leverage its, uh, its strengths and address these issues. So through providing an ad-supported movies, we, there is the potential to show more ads while providing a premium content that is accessible to everyone. <coughs> Um, uh, through the progress bar, we believe that there would be a higher tolerance to watching more ads through the concept of a delayed gratitude where if I'm done with it now, I'm good for the rest of the day. Um, and uh, through the YouTube cur curator, there's an opportunity to engage more users as the, um, the YouTube uh, user database in increases. And so we believe that these changes will satisfy the users and the advertisers while providing and generating um, more revenues to YouTube. Thank you. Victoria? Second, then I'll jump in. You there? Okay, yeah. Any questions? One question for you guys this um, ad supported movie thing is that so, why would I come to YouTube to watch an ad supported movie, or really, how would I know to come to YouTube to watch an ad supported movie when I know that I can get it for free if I have Amazon Prime or for free included in my Netflix subscription? How would you? Um, well, it seems like the only options out there are really, um, like you said, Amazon Prime and Netflix where you have to have the subscription. So if you don't have that subscription and YouTube is offering this this um, video free, because no one else on the web really has free ad-supported movies. Hulu has something, but their content in the movie section is just terrible. Um, and so if you if YouTube had this, um, this option, it would really be the only thing on the web that doesn't require you to sign in with your Xfinity, Comcast, whatever, or have these subscriptions, um, which I think is kind of a crazy thing that the internet doesn't have this ad-supported movie content available. Yeah. I'd like to um, go deeper on the, the curators, because uh, I think it's a really interesting idea. Um, how many curators do you imagine exist? Is, is it a limitless number? Could anyone be a curator? Like, how do you qualify to be, be an official curator? I think the official curators essentially would be distinguished by the people that are really popular, the same way that your official content creators are. Mm -hmm. you know? So anyone can be a curator if they wish to. Um, and the people who are popular will rise up the same way that, I mean, essentially it's the same function as people who post videos, but it's almost like a sharing function, you know? So you almost get this extra value of like repost, and then obviously people who originally posted get the promotion value. Yeah. So I, I envision it as anyone can be a curator. Yeah, I mean, I think the discovery layer is a little trickier because you, if you share a video with me that's just awesome, I love it and I share it. If you share a list of curated videos with me that are great for me, it's harder for me to predict that that list or that curation will be great for somebody else. Um, but I think that tweaks could be made to this. I, I think it's a really cool, really cool idea. I think all three ideas are really cool in different ways. Um, so, so Victoria, any other questions? I'm, I'm done on my side. No, all good. Awesome. Great job. <laughs>
slightly new angle, guys. You have to work with this. But we need to plug in, otherwise we lose, lose Victoria really quickly. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, Blair. Hello, Victoria. Thank you all for coming out. My name is Jake. Delaney. And Zuna. I'm Ryan. And with the goal of making YouTube the premium outlet for media buyers and advertisers, we have completely reimagined the design of the platform and the entire user experience. So as I'm sure you all know by now, this is the YouTube homepage. This is the first thing a user sees when they go to the YouTube platform. So we ask, what's the problem? What can we do to reimagine the homepage to make it a more user-friendly experience and make people want to stay on the platform longer? We, had, we came up with three main problems we found at the homepage. It's clutter. There are just too many videos there. It's impersonal and it's disorganized. And we thought, what about this makes it a premium experience? How can we change this to reimagine it? We took a survey of about 100 people asking, what makes you watch a video on YouTube? About 50% said it was through random browsing, so that could be either through recommendations or through the YouTube homepage. But the other 50 said it was through a friend sending a link or through word of mouth. So we set to make the YouTube homepage more accessible for these people. Our solution is twofold. First, use Twitter to combine and make a more community-based viewing experience. And second, to redesign the homepage experience and make it more personal. So can I have a quick show of hands from the audience of who in the audience has a Twitter or a, who has had a Twitter account in the past? That's what I thought. Similar to our survey results, it's a lot. Twitter has 302 million users with 43% of those aged 10 to 19. This younger generation is then an important age group to get on the platform and to get them hooked on YouTube. Through the use of uh, Twitter as a following, as a, as a powerful mean because of two reasons. First of all, the majority of Twitter users is, is uh, from this demographic age range, but also they are the ones who have a lot of spare time that can be used effectively on YouTube. But how are we going to make this happen? Easy. We're going to combine Twitter and YouTube account. So from now on, you can use your Twitter account to log, to log into YouTube account and vice versa. And by doing so, you can have a direct access of the YouTube videos shared on Twitter without being led to another tab, which is the case right now if you go to your, if you use your uh, Twitter app. But at the same time, if you go to your, to your YouTube homepage, there's going to be a whole section dedicated just for you where you can have access to the videos that, that have been watched uh, recently by the people that you are following or your followers. And also another section where you can have uh, access to the worldwide trendy videos. So the goals of um, the union of uh, Twitter and uh, YouTube account is to increase the amount of uh, viewership, but also the amount of time uh, what time watch on uh, YouTube, but also to sort of develop the sense of uh, community that YouTube doesn't necessarily